Number 10, Rob Van Dam and Bill Alfonso versus Tommy Dreamer and Beulah McGillicuddy. As good as it gets, 1997. On paper, this match may not sound extreme, but it's in fact one of the bloodiest in ECW history. Rob Van Dam's manager, Bill Alfonso, teamed up with him to take on Tommy Dreamer and his wife, Beulah McGillicuddy, at ECW's As Good As It Gets, 1997. As the match unfolded, Dreamer got taken out by RVD and Sabu, leaving Bill Alfonso alone with Dreamer's wife. In a crazily entertaining sequence, Fonzie would be busted open and bled all over the ring. Beulah smashed him with an oven tray before performing her husband's moveset, including a DDT and a low blow. Alfonso tried to powerbomb Beulah, but she reversed it into a Hurricane Rana and pinned the former referee for the victory. This match turned out to be an absolute bloodbath and was far better than it had any right to be and is one of ECW's most infamous matches. Number 9. Tommy Dreamer vs Brian Lee High Incident 1996 Tommy Dreamer and Brian Lee had been feuding for a while before this match came about, but trust ECW to take a match stipulation and make it as extreme as possible. At ECW's High Incident 1996, the pair would face off in a scaffold match, where both men would battle on a scaffold platform above the ring with a pile of tables beneath them. The platform looked unsafe to begin with, and the pair were teased nearly falling over the edge, but since they were barely able to move on such a small surface, Dreamer would send Brian Lee flying off the platform, crashing through the tables below into the ring to pick up the win in a dangerous and nasty looking spot. Number 8. Raven and Cactus Jack vs Tommy Dreamer and Terry Funk, November to Remember 1995 With this being one of ECW's biggest shows of all time, four hardcore legends were put together to showcase what ECW was all about. All four men would be bloodied and battered, with all sorts of weaponry being introduced. From Funk being choked with a toilet seat, to Raven's head being wrapped in barbed wire and being pile driven onto a chair. This match was nothing short of brutal. Shovels, golf sticks and cheese graters all came into play. And even the referee wasn't safe being taken out by the Funkster. Even after Dreamer and Terry Funk picked up the win, both teams continued to brawl after the bell covered in blood. The live crowd clearly appreciated what they saw that night, respecting the sacrifice of the talent as a huge ECW chant rang out around the arena as the show went off the air, making the company look fantastic. Number 7. Terry Funk and Sandman vs Mick Foley and Shane Douglas, ECW 1995 Put four hardcore legends in the ring together and this is the outcome. All four men would use a variety of weapons holding nothing back from chairs to guardrails and toolboxes. It seemed that everything from under the ring was put into use to cause as much pain as possible. As each legend began to brawl throughout the arena, the peak of the violence would culminate when Terry Funk decided to start blowing fire at Mick Foley, introducing a flaming branding iron to burn into Foley's chest, followed by a pile driver directly on top of it to pick up the win. This would prove to be one of the most extreme and shocking finishes in ECW history. Number 6, Rob Van Dam vs Sabu, The Doctor Is In, 1996 Throughout the history of ECW, RVD and Sabu went from close allies to bitter enemies. Back in 1996, the pair would face off in a stretcher match at ECW's The Doctor Is In event. The bitter rivals would have countless matches within the promotion, but this may be their most extreme. The winner of the bout was the man who could place the other onto the stretcher and have them wheeled away. Both men would wage war and hit each other with everything they had. High flying moves, brain rattling chair shots and several table breaks featured throughout. However, as the match marched towards its conclusion, RVD managed to place Sabu onto the stretcher but the cocky hole left in show jumped off the top rope with a somersault sent on and landed directly onto the edge of the stretcher with only the concrete floor below breaking his fall. Fortunately for Sabu, he managed to move out of the way and wheeled the motionless Rob Van Dam out of the arena instead. This proved to be a brutal stunning array of spots that had predated WWE's TLC bouts by 4 years and demonstrated how ahead of its time ECW was. Number 5. Sandman vs Sabu, Stairway to Hell 1998 Put two of ECW's most extreme and legendary wrestlers together and this is the outcome. 
as Sandman took on Sabu in a Stairway to Hell ladder match, which had barbed wire suspended above the ring. The first to claim the barbed wire could use it however they wanted on their opponent, as if that wasn't hardcore enough, Sabu would end up breaking his jaw on the guardrail partway through the match and simply just taped it back together to continue the fight. The ladder was used heavily throughout, often being thrown at each other's heads and incorporated into their movesets, with Sandman even suplexing the ladder onto Sabu. The pair would fight throughout the crowd, with Sabu taking numerous death-defying dives off platforms. Even though Sandman was able to collect the barbed wire, he would be thrown off the ladder and even end up with his head wrapped in the barbed wire. Somehow the Sandman would manage to pick up the win after a huge kendo stick shot to Sabu's broken jaw in an extremely bloody massacre of a matchup. Number 4. Vic Grimes vs New Jack, Living Dangerously 2000 In a match that would change both men's lives forever, the pair faced off at ECW's Living Dangerously 2000. The match unfolded as the standard walk and brawl through the crowd that ECW fans were accustomed to seeing. However, New Jack had a reputation for not only being hardcore and a legit gangster, but also for diving off balconies. As the pair brawled throughout the crowd, they worked their way up to a platform, with Vic Grimes seemingly to be visibly unsure about how high the spot was. But there was no time for cold feet, as New Jack threw both Grimes and himself off the scaffolding through a poorly placed table straight onto the concrete floor below. Grimes would end up landing onto New Jack's head in a violent and shocking moment. This would result in New Jack experiencing brain damage and a permanent blindness in his right eye. As if this wasn't enough, the pair would face off 18 months later at XPW's free fall event in a scaffold match, where New Jack would purposely throw Vic Grimes beyond the tables, nearly missing the ring and landing on the concrete as payback due to the injuries he suffered at their Living Dangerously fight. Number 3. Sabu vs Terry Funk, Born to be Wired 1997 This match was so extreme that Paul Heyman agreed to never attempt it again in ECW. Two of the most highly legendary hardcore wrestlers in history, Terry Funk and Sabu, faced off in a no-rope barbed wire match that still shocks audiences to this day. The pair ripped each other to shreds with the barbed wire, with even their ring attire being torn apart as well. Sabu would get caught up in the barbed wire and actually tore his bicep open in a sickening scene. The homicidal, genocidal, suicidal, death-defying Sabu lived up to his reputation when he taped up his arm and continued the match. Sabu's manager, Bill Alfonso, was also completely busted open by Terry Funk's fists wrapped in barbed wire. As if the barbed wire wasn't enough, both men introduced a number of other weapons into the bout as well. Things would go a step further, however, when both men would wrap themselves in barbed wire to inflict punishment, only for them to eventually become intertwined. The finish came when Sabu somehow managed to pin Terry Funk, whilst both men were entangled in the wire to win the ECW Championship. Both men had to be cut out of the barbed wire afterwards, with the wire even being stuck around Funk's throat. This match lives on in history and proved to be even too extreme for ECW. Number 2. Axel Rotten vs Ian Rotten, Hardcore Heaven 1995 In the first ever Taipei death match, the Rotten brothers were out to massacre each other. Both brothers wrapped their fists in tape, dipped them in super glue, followed by broken glass, and then the match could begin. An insane stipulation for sure, this match isn't for the faint of hearted, as both men pummeled each other into a vicious bloodbath using the broken shards of glass to scrape across each other's heads as if that wasn't enough, fun tacks were also introduced into the fray. The finish came when Axel Rotten backdropped Ian onto the tacks and then hit a splash to earn the victory. This bout is as brutal as they come and a sickening display of blood loss even for the most hardcore of fans. Number 1. Mass Transit and Devon Dudley vs The Gangsters ECW House Show 1996 one of the most extreme and violent moments in wrestling took place at an ECW house show in 1996, now known as the Mass Transit Incident, when Axel Rotten no-showed a scheduled tag team bout pitting him and Devon Dudley against the gangsters, New Jack and Mustafa Saeed. An untrained 17-year-old backyard wrestler named Mass Transit was drafted in to replace him. Mass Transit managed to convince ECW booker Paul Heyman that he had been trained to wrestle by the legendary Killer Kowalski 
and was 21 years of age. Given the opportunity of a lifetime, the youngster was determined to make a lasting impression. He did so, but not in the way that he envisioned. In order to make the bout memorable, Transit had requested New Jack to blade him, but the original gangster had earlier felt disrespected by Transit and cut him too deeply with a scalpel, which caused the 17-year-old to bleed excessively. Transit's dad could be heard in the crowd, shouting for the match to be stopped, and Transit would later be rushed to hospital and required 50 stitches to close the wound. The aftermath would see ECW having to cancel a pay-per-view event and New Jack being charged with aggravated assault and battery, which highlighted the gravity of the injuries he had inflicted on his opponent. New Jack was later acquitted, but the incident left a dark stain on ECW's image. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more wrestling content.